Hi, this is Terry. Welcome to Snowdrop Sunsets. Uh, the video today is around the subject of coercion and bullying. Um, the reason I've decided to make it is because it links to the previous video that I created around propaganda. But also, um, I took a break from social media um, for quite a while, a few months, and well, particularly Facebook. And then recently I went back on it and I've had quite a few experiences on just reading some of the comments people are making at the minute um, based around the situation we're all living through. Obviously it's amplifying everybody's emotions and um, it's particularly been <laughs> really divisive. And there's nothing wrong like with a good debate, you know, as far as I see it. I mean, that's what the idea of democracy is supposed to be about. Um, for me, that's what um, diversity is about. That's how the nature is created, that there's you know many different perspectives, many different viewpoints, um, and that if we're going to live in a civilised society, we need to appreciate, we need to understand those different viewpoints and perspectives and find a way to tolerate each other and to be able to live cohabitantly with some sort of level of harmony. Now, obviously, it's an interesting dynamic now with the internet and social media where we're connected with so many more people than what we normally would be. Obviously, like in the past, we would have just been connected with um, our uh, immediate family and, you know, social group in the area that we live, obviously, unless you travelled. Um, or then, yes, you would choose to connect with people, other people, friends and things who are more of your vibe or on your line of thinking. So... I think it's quite an unusual um, space that we've created with Facebook and social media where you can connect with anybody from around the world even and particularly you can connect with people with very different viewpoints, very different opinions. And one part of us finds that really exciting that, um, you know, we're at an age where you can hear so many different perspectives and opinions. And um, for me, in one level, it's quite humbling um, because you can learn a lot. Um, if you listen <laughs> and try and understand each other, we can learn a lot. Um, but, you know, the other side of that is that um, because we're not... Because what I'm about to talk about, um, because some of the general means of control or manipulation that go on in our society are used through social media, it's like dripping into our culture and particularly into our um, social network culture. And by that I mean, um, linking with the previous video I made around propaganda, now the media industry advertising... Um, all of this um, industry is based around trying to highlight the flaws, trying to pick up on your pain points, trying to find those parts of ourselves that we feel insecure about and then effectively use that against us so we go and buy a product or follow you know, a set of advice or whatever it is. And it taps in, I think I said in the previous, it taps into these deep primal um, parts of ourselves that override our conscious minds or our um, best interests for ourselves and each other. And it, and it taps into real primal parts of our brain. So it can be difficult to control. And I think um, particularly, like I say, with the culture of social media, um, we don't have to look someone in the eye when we say something to them. Um, and we don't have to deal with the consequences. Again, like, you know, going back in history, if you called someone a stupid idiot to their face and they disagreed and potentially if they're bigger and stronger than you, they might just punch you in the face, you know? There would be a consequence for stepping out of line with that, that level of um, rudeness and um, belittling. And that's what I want to come down to. So for me, there's, there's, there's two things I want to talk about, bullying and coercion. The idea of bullying being that um, you're intentionally trying to belittle somebody, to make them feel small, to make them feel less than they are, to make them feel self-conscious, to put them in a place of fear so that you can control them, so that you can overpower them and feel a sense of power in yourself. 
obviously I'm sure I don't need to explain how damaging bullying is we try and stop it from an early age at school um, which is quite ironic because it's just in our culture and I think kids just like see what's going on amplify it and they're acting it out you know in, in, in those child intense situations with not enough adults about the whole of the story but what school does prepare us for in a way is um, how to overcome bullying it's very difficult obviously if you are being bullied especially as a child and you're not given the tools to overcome it um, and I think that's why we've kind of partly grown into this culture um, and this is not about healthy competition it's not about healthy debate this is as simple as if you don't have any other argument to defend your well not even defend to make your point to share your perspective if the only thing you can do is to call somebody else a name or make comments that are intentionally trying to demean them just to elevate your position it's just bullying and it's a pretty pathetic argument <laughs> frankly uh, but i see it so much now um and it's 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 dangerous at the point that we're at i think because it's so divisive and actually when you've got grown adults who are just completely dismissing other grown adults with this childish um, name calling, belittling, um, it's not a very healthy or mature or um, sane <laughs> way to be in the world and to talk about the important subjects that we need to be discussing at the minute. And it just stops the conversation is what it does because people either get defensive and then you know you're fighting against each other and arguing rather than listening and trying to understand a perspective and trying and essentially respecting the fact that as a not even as adults at all people like i don't even think they should go top down from adults to kids even you know um but that's kind of a slightly different level that i'll talk about in a minute but um as adult adult if adult to adult if you can't listen to somebody else's perspective and all you can do is invalidate their opinion and completely invalidate their whole experience um, try and diminish them make them be appear as stupid or less than um, it's coming from these really deep insecurities in us now the other side of it is um, when you are being bullied the defensiveness that comes up and again it, it comes from these deep-rooted primal um, unaddressed wounds within us and um, it's something I've had to personally work on like both sides of you know trying not to attack up little people if I have a different opinion that's you know something I do is my personal growth becoming an adult but then now um, having that put upon us still you know i'm not triggered as much as i would have been when i was younger as a child but it still brings up that primal instinct of oh, i'm not stupid but what it has identified um or you know for me is that when somebody belittles you or is bullying you the only reason it really has an effect upon us is because we agree with them part of us agrees with what they're saying or part of us fears <laughs> that we might be in agreement with what they're saying um, and essentially obviously we as humans we want we're born loving ourselves i think we're born um appreciating ourselves and then as we grow we take on these external information that we're given and it can cause you know if we think that oh well that that, that means that i'm stupid or that means that i'm ugly or that means that i'm um, incompetent whatever it is whatever we're told by our parents or our teachers or the kids at school that we took on and believed that we believed becomes a wound so when that as an adult if we've not addressed it within ourselves if we've not healed that wound triggers and then we get into these horrible bullying fights and that don't really have any point because at the end of them we've not become to any sort of agreement we've not become stronger smarter or wiser but at the end of it we've just got angry triggered belittled people <laughs> and that's nonsense to me it doesn't make any sense why we would do that as conscious adults um, so I suppose there's like two points to that that I want to make about bullying is being aware of our response 
Um, if someone says something to us that we feel that, that triggers something and we want to attack or defend ourselves, it's probably triggered something within you that you kind of need to work on. Um, you know, you agreeing, a part of you is agreeing um, that that's right and that's why it hurts. Because actually if someone says, oh, you're a stupid flamingo to me, no, I'm not a stupid flamingo, it doesn't hurt. Somebody says something else that's like maybe it's a deeper wound. Um, you know, I personally I really feel strong emotions when people invalidate us. Like you know, like my experience is not valid. So if someone says, um, you know, uh, I'm trying to think of the words that was used. I want to, yeah, basically exactly that. You're invalid. It 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 does something to me. Or oh, it did. I'm I'm healing that in myself and as a conscious adult I see that that's a reaction that's caused in us and I question it and I do my work to heal that wound in us because I know I'm not invalid so it doesn't trigger us as much because it's a healing process um, but the next level to that is coercion now for me coercion involves a little bit more power um, and a little bit more threat so bullying might be peer-to-peer Coercion might potentially be top down um, and coercion involves some sort of punishment, threat, negative consequence. Um, and the coercion part scares me a little bit more because it's filtered into a lot of our day to day lives, our interactions, the systems that we function within. So it's become so normalised we don't even see it anymore. And coercion is essentially using that, using like bullying can be a tactic of coercion, is using um, tools to belittle people in order to take away their power to um, force them to do something against their will. Try and force them into something that they don't want to do or they wouldn't be willing to do and you're then coercing or change in the course of their experience by you know, by overpowering them with this idea of threat. And I find that really difficult to not comprehend because I totally understand it, but just to accept that we've allowed that as part of our society, like that for me is it's I don't want to use the word offensive because it's so loaded these days, but it is offensive. Like to me, coercion is offensive um, and it's dangerous because actually if you're starting to take people out of their free will and we're acting in a space where we're in fear of threat or punishment for actually just being ourselves or giving an opinion or um doing or not doing what we feel is right then what are we creating like what are we creating <laughs> certainly not like civilized society it's certainly not um you know a natural holistic interdependent symbiotic co-creation system that's anything like what nature would create it's abusive and controlling and it's toxic and i think it's gonna this 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 covert coercion that's becoming part of our daily lives is gonna essentially be very toxic to us as individuals as groups um in communities and families and as wider like as you know nations or um humanity in general um and it can come across in, I'm trying to think of very specific examples um, on, that I've seen on social media. Okay, well, I've taken it from social media, but generally back into a propaganda campaign. There's adverts at the minute, or there was a couple of months ago, that basically said, if you leave the house, um, if you leave the house, other people will die. Now that's coercion, because actually there may be a, a will to leave your house, a want to leave your house, a need to leave your house, <laughs> right? That's, I mean, before this whole pandemic thing, that would have just been accepted as a totally normal thing. Even in the pandemic situation, it's a totally normal thing to want and need to do that. 
and if you um, have the will to do that and then you're hearing so I heard this through Spotify I don't really watch many ads so I can't even imagine the ads that are on the telly and all that this was just on my Spotify and um, if you leave the house you are going to kill other people and another one that was we're all going to die I mean <laughs> that's not true <laughs> and it's a threat because what it's saying is, because we already know as a society that, um, and, and I think it's just ingrained in us, actually that intentionally killing or causing harm to another person is wrong. It's not good. It's not a socially acceptable behaviour. And then that can lead to punishment, um, imprisonment, social rejection, um, all the consequences you would expect if somebody went out and intentionally killed other people and you know committed mass murder but this is just an example of how that it's psychologically damaging because then as a person who wants to wants and needs to leave my house and I'm being told if I do that I'm going to become a murderer and I know the consequences for being a murderer is all the negative things I've said it then makes me question my own will. It makes me question my own sense of what's right, what I want, what I need, and puts all these layers of confusion, of um, mental anxiety um, onto somebody that they don't need. And it's manipulating us into behaviors that are not natural. And then the next level of that, obviously, is if we're manipulating us just in these small ways into behaviours that are not natural, then really not natural behaviours are going to become normal or accepted. It's a very big, dark, messy pool of cess <laughs> that I really don't think we should go down. It comes up in other ways, like even um, we do it at school, parents do it, you know, teachers do it to students, um, parents do it to children governments do it to people on social support um, doctors do it to other people now um, just this idea that if you don't do this what I'm telling you is right you are gonna be punished you are gonna face really negative consequences and that is messing with our psychology so essentially for me personally anything that I that it comes attached to bullying or coercion, I'm probably not gonna follow that advice. Like in my life, it has never led to good consequences to do anything that somebody else was trying to force me to do. Um, so, and, and, and just, I suppose, probably the amplified um, emotions, particularly around the debate that's going on with um, you know all the situations regarding the pandemic I'm not going to say the words so I can't get censored um, the strategies of the pandemic that um, if it comes with coercion or bullying attached it just how can it be good if you know something's right for you and you know something's good for you you're just going to do it you don't need convinced to do it um, you just don't because we're tuned to want to do what's right and what's good for us and respond to our needs. So if something has to be forced upon you, if something has to be, if you have to be made less than, if you have to be, if you're, you have to be um, manipulated, if you have to be um, punished, you know, the threat of punishment in order to do something, then it's kind of implied to me that it's not going to be good for us. People don't really need to threaten you to do something that's good for you. Um, and I know parents, like I say, parents and teachers and doctors do this a lot. Um, but actually, if it's just explained without a threat, and then we're left to come to our own conclusions, then people might change their minds. But it's this whole forcing of the the forcing of it that I think is causing so much um, amplification of the behaviours of the bullying of the um yeah the debate that frankly like if you don't agree then it's going to be your fault that however many people die or you know if you don't conform you're going to be a social outcast or um 
you know if you don't just comply you're gonna lose your access to resources like these are threats these are really primal threats that affect our being our whole body our minds our spirit like it's just really damaging and dangerous um yeah i think that's about all i want to talk about on this subject right now um thanks for watching the video um i hope you've found you know taken something from it if you appreciate the insights that i'm sharing please like and subscribe and make comments i'm really interested in the comments or people any feedback people have or if they want to add something to the conversation um, or even any other videos you might be interested that um, you think I could make. <laughs> Thank you very much for your time. Take care.